The evolution of marine animal life on our world has been shaped by many major and profound events. When animals first appeared in the ocean on Earth, the planet was a snowball. On this snowball Earth, the surface was covered by ice up to a kilometer thick, all the way from the poles to the equator. This ice age probably killed off many species of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. But when it ended around 635 million years ago, a new group of large, complex, multicellular eukaryotes rose to prominence. The Ediacara biota. These organisms came in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some were frond-like, others were shaped like disks. Some may have swam through the water while others crawled along the seafloor. Some of the organisms in the Ediacara biota were probably animals. Others may have been prokaryotes or fungi or plants or algae. Some of the organisms may have even belonged to groups of eukaryotes which are no longer alive on Earth. Whatever the case may be, the Ediacara biota ultimately disappeared around 540 million years ago at the end of the Ediacaran period. Scientists now believe that the organisms of the Ediacara biota went extinct because they could not compete with real animals for resources like food and space on the seafloor. Ultimately, the Ediacara biota was entirely replaced by the real animals, known as the Cambrian fauna. Beginning around 541 million years ago or so, in the early Cambrian period, there was an explosion in the taxonomic biodiversity, ecological variability, and morphological disparity of animal life. This event, the Cambrian explosion, was a major evolutionary radiation. It affected virtually every major phylum of animal life and signified the beginning of most of their fossil records. Life itself began to look different. Animals now had characters that had never existed before. Their body plans were completely unlike anything prior, and life now came in a stunning variety of shapes and sizes. These morphological changes occurred as animals adapted to their environment and they opened up a wide range of ecological niches that had not existed prior to that time. Deep burrowing animals, tall filter feeding ones, nectonic predators, planktonic animals, detritivores of many types. The animals of the Cambrian fauna made a living in a vast variety of ways. And of course, these changes in morphology and ecology were accompanied by a surge in taxonomic biodiversity. There had never been more species of animals on the planet. So what came next? It's hard to put a date on it, but for all intents and purposes, the Cambrian explosion ended by the end of the Middle Cambrian, around 505 million years ago. Very little happened to animals over the next 20 million years. There was very little change in biodiversity between the Middle Cambrian and Ordovician periods. The number of taxa did not significantly change, and morphological and ecological variation did not change much either. The only events during this time from the Middle Cambrian to the Ordovician were a few relatively minor extinction events which largely affected only trilobites. Otherwise, animal life did not experience many ups or downs. The next 
big event that really shaped animal life occurred during the early and middle Ordovician. We call this event the Great Ordovician Biodiversification Event. Like the Cambrian explosion before it, the Great Ordovician Biodiversification Event was an evolutionary radiation, which involved a substantial increase in the taxonomic, ecologic, and morphologic diversity of our ocean. Altogether, the Ordovician biodiversification event had a number of significant consequences on marine life. First, the numbers of species, genera, family, and orders all rose dramatically during the early and middle Ordovician between 485 and 455 million years ago. The number of orders doubled. The number of families tripled and the numbers of genera and species each reached new heights. These levels of taxonomic biodiversity persisted for the rest of the Paleozoic. Second, during the Great Ordovician event, the Cambrian evolutionary fauna declined and was replaced by the Paleozoic evolutionary fauna. Groups of animals that dominated the ocean in the Cambrian began to disappear and were replaced by others which had been uncommon or unimportant prior to that time. After the Great Ordovician biodiversification event, the ocean was dominated by cephalopods, crinoids, corals, graptolites, and various other groups which would reign over the ocean for the rest of the Paleozoic. Lastly, the Great Ordovician biodiversification event marked a major increase in the complexity of marine ecosystems. Ecosystems became more complex. The event began with a plankton revolution among the microscopic organisms living high in the water column and drifting in the water currents. During this revolution, a wide new array of planktonic organisms arose on our planet. In particular, there was a diversification of photoautotrophic organisms or phytoplankton. The number of phytoplankton taxa grew dramatically at the beginning of the Ordovician period. This plankton revolution was soon followed by the diversification of animals living in the benthos. For the first time in Earth history, crown group corals, sponges, and bryzoans began to build large reefs. Prior to this time, all reefs had been built by stromatolites and extinct stem group animals. The Ordovician reefs, in contrast, were somewhat comparable to modern coral reefs. Brachiopods, mollusks, and chinoderms and other benthic organisms also diversified during the Ordovician, creating a number of changes in their ecosystems. This diversification of benthic animals led to an increase in epifaunal and infaunal tiering as organisms began to grow higher above the sea floor and dig deeper beneath it than ever before. Life was no longer confined close to the sea floor as it was before. Instead, it grew high into the water column. Stalked flower-like echinoderms called crinoids and blastoids in particular were some of the tallest epifaunal organisms of the time. Overall, the Great Ordovician Biodiversification Event set the stage for the evolution of animals for the next 200 million years. And perhaps more importantly, it created an ocean world somewhat similar to our own, at least on the sea floor. By the end of the Ordovician, the bizarre and alien looking creatures of the Ediacara biota and Cambrian explosion were long gone. If you could time travel yourself back to the Ordovician, 
you would find a recognizable ocean similar to our own. It would be different, but similar in most ways that matter. So, what caused the Ordovician biodiversification event? In all likelihood, there were a multitude of causes. Paleogeography was probably one of the most important factors. The Great Ordovician biodiversification event was neither global nor instantaneous. It happened at different times in different places because most of the Earth's land masses were separated from each other by oceans and seas. During the Ordovician, North America, Siberia, Baltica, and parts of Europe and North China were isolated land masses separated by shallow, apiric seas. The rest of the land masses were assembled into a partial supercontinent called Gondwana. Gondwana included Africa, Australia, India, South America, and Antarctica. Gondwana was separated from the other land masses by a large, deep ocean. Most animals inhabit continental shelves surrounding land masses. So under these circumstances, it would have been very difficult for species to spread from one continental shelf around one landmass to another. Most continents would have developed their own unique communities, which we call endemic faunas. An endemic fauna is found in one geographic region and no other. On some rare occasions, some individual organisms did cross the oceans and moved from one continental shelf to another. They may have been caught in a fast moving storm or strong ocean current, which carried them across the water. Others may have hitched rides on or even been unintentionally carried by nectonic swimmers across the ocean. Regardless of how some individuals spread from one landmass to another, these travelers would have found themselves isolated from the rest of their species. It would have been unlikely that they or their offspring could easily make the journey. They would have been isolated from their ancestors. So the two populations separated by an ocean would have evolved in isolation until one or two new species emerged as a result of allopatric speciation. Other factors may have also affected the evolution of life during the Great Ordovician biodiversification event, such as global cooling, meteor impacts, and volcanic activity. Indeed, like the Cambrian explosion before it, the Great Ordovician biodiversification event may have been caused by a number of environmental changes. For instance, there is evidence to suggest that there was an increase in the amount of nutrients in the ocean during the radiation event. These nutrients would have served as fertilizer, bolstering the reproduction of phytoplankton and causing massive algal blooms. These algal blooms would have produced oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis. If so, there may have been an oxygenation event in the order of vision that could have caused the radiation of animal life. In any case, the Great Ordovician biodiversification event continues to perplex and intrigue scientists all around the world. Regardless of its cause, this evolutionary radiation was mo one of the most important milestones in the history of animal life. It had a lasting legacy on benthic marine organisms, one that continues to influence the modern ocean today.